What you see here is the Omedia 3 software package. The Omedia 3 software package is the software that we use to communicate to our Easy View signs, our Excite signs, and our brand new A series displays. Uh, the top of the Omedia 3 has the frame sequence and the timeline window. That's up top here. In the middle, we have the emulator window. In the bottom, we have the text, background, and media library modifying window. Now those aren't active because we don't currently have anything inside of the actual emulator. So let's put something in there. First thing we do is just make a simple text message. Let's go to insert text. And that'll give you what we call a text box. The text box is uh, are surrounded by this, these white lines here with these little black nodes. And these little black nodes allow you to click and drag to make the text box larger, smaller, thinner, and wider. They also allow you to click on the text box and move the text box anywhere on the display you see fit. If you'd like to make the text box as big as the sign itself, just hover your mouse over one of the lines until you get the crosshairs, give your mouse a double click. Now you can see the text box all the way around the actual display. I'm going to make my text box about that big. Now once we've made the text box and opened it up, we can click inside of it and get a blinking cursor. Now we just use our keyboard as a standard uh, word processor and start typing. So I typed in test message number two. Now because my message was actually wider than one frame of the sign, I end up with this scroll bar. I also end up with a very wide uh, time for this message on the timeline. You'll notice my hold effect down here goes to scroll and the left. Whenever you make a message that is wider then what fits on one frame of the display, Omedia 3 will automatically rotate it for you. It'll rotate for one complete cycle of that message. And the software just repeat itself over and over. Now, if you want to stop that, you just push the pause button. You want to play that, you just push the play button. To edit text once you've created it, right click on the text box, choose edit. That automatically highlights all of the text inside of the text box and chooses it for you. From here we can choose to go down here to the hold effect and choose the speed. Now watch what happens to the timeline as I increase the speed. It goes a little faster now so it doesn't take as much time. But yet it still will scroll for one fleet cycle. We can also right click inside the text box and choose select all. And now we can adjust the font by coming down to the font window. And you can choose any one of these fonts you wish, whatever looks good for your sign. Feel free to experiment and play around with uh, the different fonts. Now, once you get past the uh, standard fonts that you see here, we end up with the Windows fonts. Now, the Windows fonts come from your Windows operating system. Whatever fonts that you have on your computer, you may use inside of Omedia. For instance, the Arial font. Once you get to the Arial font, you can make it a little bit bigger. Now, once you find a font, that you like, you can choose scroll down a little bit. You can choose set as default. Now what that will do is it will take the information for the font size, the color, the background color, shadow color, all of that, 
and make it your default. So whenever you open a new text box, that is the font that you start with. Just saves you from having to go through and make all the all of the changes. We can choose the color of the text. And click select all. Let's choose the color. Play that. You can see we got some red text now. We can choose to add a shadow to that text. Now, shadow will give it more of a three-dimensional effect unless you choose the full shadow, in which case it completely surrounds the message. Our message is a little tall for the sign, so what we can do is just bring open the text box a little more. You can also adjust the direction of that full shadow by coming to the direction. Just click and drag. And the thickness. If for a uh, text that's uh, smaller than one frame inside of a text box, you can also choose the alignment. don't like something, right click on it and delete it. That gets rid of it. Start over. Insert text. There's a new text box. Now this one, I'm going to write hold on. If I can spell it. There we go. Now I'm going to insert another text box. Now that one shows up right underneath. So I want to click on it, drag it, and bring it down. This particular text box I'm going to scroll that to the left. And I'm going to make both of the text boxes match. So you can have one text box hold something, another text box scroll something. Good for advertising events and then uh, times a day. It's right out. Text box is worth of uh, information on here. For the most part, um, uh, Folks will only be able to get two, depending on the side. So you really don't want more than two anyhow, uh, just because people don't have very long to read your display. So if they're too busy, you're not going to get your point across. Each text box can have an independent color and can have an independent hold effect. You can also experiment with the appearance effect right click edit now an appearance effect like snow will actually add a little bit of time to the timeline because we want that message to hold for X amount of seconds once it snows in properly I don't see too many people using that one by the way actually a lot of municipalities don't even allow moving text so most folks will just hold their messages on there. Now you can adjust on the timeline how long a message actually holds. For instance, if I choose here, that, that's three seconds right there. I'm going to insert another text box. And this one I'm going to click and drag and move and bring it up onto the same line. And I'm move this down here.
click and drag this one out for three seconds. So now I've got two text boxes that play one right after the, the other. Right click, edit. I'm going to bring this one up top. And insert text. Now this one, I'm going to click and drag and bring it all the way over this way. Make it as wide as the two of them are. Bring that one down here. So my top line is rotating two messages and my bottom is only rotating one in a scroll pattern. So you can do three different things at once on the display. Uh, we can also insert the date. Position that anywhere on the sign we wish. We can insert the time. Either in the same box or insert the text, get rid of it. And then insert the time. And run time and date. That's blinking like that because I don't have these uh, exactly matched. There we go. And if your sign has a uh, temperature probe attached to it, you can insert the temperature. Now it will show up as negative 999 degrees Fahrenheit on your emulator. On your sign, it will not show up like that. If it does, you've got a problem. Okay, so adding graphics to these units pretty simple really. Just go to insert background from file. Now you go to a folder where you have graphics saved in. For instance, if I choose this one, if it asks you if you would like to fill the screen, you say yes, keep proportions no, it'll uh, fill the display. Don't like it, delete it. Do another one. Insert background from file. Now on this unit, you can use image files, uh, bitmap images, uh, GIF images, JPGs, PNGs, AVIs, MPEG-4s, and WMVs. 
the sign will understand them all. I've just got a bunch of ABIs. I find them just easier to work with. A uh, general rule of thumb is if you can play the ABI on a uh, media player on your computer, like Windows Media Player or something, it, it should have no problems being ported into Mobile Media. Um, your graphics, you are going to want to save locally. Uh, Mobile Media will pitch a fit if you set um, these graphics into a uh, network shared drive. Uh, what O Media does is it posts a file path to the graphic. It doesn't actually save the graphic itself. It saves a file path to it on your PC. And it can't see shared drives. Now you can use either the content that we've uh, provided inside of the O Media software package, you can get to those by going to the media library. Go to full color here. We can do things like this. Choose yes, no, and then we got some, some firework. If you're going to make your own stuff, you can either make them GIFs or AVIs. That's what I would stick with as far as uh, creating. Um, you can also do uh, bring in static images like uh, bitmaps. If you're going to make a static image or if you're going to make a graphic image, you're going to want to make sure that you find out what the pixel count of the sign is first. For instance, my sign that I'm working with is a 64 by 128. Okay, so if I were to make a graphic uh, like this in you know, animation shop or something like that, I would want to either begin creating it on a 64 by 128 uh, palette, or I would create it and then resize it to 64 by 128. The more pixels you have, the better resolution you're going to get. So people, yeah, people with smaller signs aren't going to get as good a resolution as people with larger ones. That's life in the big city when it comes to LED signs. So this particular one, the one that I'm working with, an A-series uh, 64 by 128, that's pretty decent. Uh, you can get some pretty good stuff up there on a, uh, on a 16 millimeter pitch. If I bring up this one okay, and then insert time over it, Make that shadow of black around it. Make it a little bit bigger. And play. You see, I can put the time in front of a um, rotating background. And you could you could do that as well. I mean, you're you could create a graphic that advertises something in the background. And then, for instance, you can take this. Okay, the customer can make a uh, text box that is a little bit smaller. And then a little bit wider and maybe put some uh, pricing information or something here with, you know, the, the graphic running over here so they can see most of it and then the pricing information. After you've created messages, all right, you can come into what we call the scheduler and you can select the sign. I, uh, all media will show you the signs that are on your network. Most folks don't have one sign. I work at a sign company, so I have a lot of signs <laughs> for obvious reasons. Okay, that's why I have this training test site right here. Now, I'm just going to remove this message here. All right. So if I go to select the sign, 
and add messages. Windows Explorer opens up and finds all of the messages that I've created for a 64 by 128 sign that I've just made messages for. I can select those messages and bring them into the scheduler and send them all out to the sign at the same time. For instance, this one. If I hit this button, the message goes out to the sign and it'll play always, which means 24 seven. I can schedule these messages for daily, which turns it on and off at the, uh, at a specific interval that you set. Um, you can also end it by a certain date. So if you only want it to run, let's say this week, you would run it from the 26th. You would start it on the 26th. You would end it at the 30th. And after that, it wouldn't play anymore. Um, you can also choose weekly, which basically operates off of the same premise, except for you can choose the days of the week. So if you only want it to play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just check those boxes. And then you can end that by it too. So if you have uh, a message that you want to play for the entire month, but it only runs on Mondays or it only runs on Fridays, you can go ahead and set that. It starts at a certain time, it ends at a certain time, it ends by a certain date, you hit apply changes, and the changes are made up here. But sure is no end date here play every day or every week on Friday. So someone has like a, uh, so at the restaurant, they advertise every Friday. Well, they can set that up every day or they can set that up once and it'll run every Friday from 6.50 or 6 o'clock a.m. to 4.59 p.m. Go back to always, apply the change and out it goes. Now you can add as many messages as you want to in here uh, or until the memory on the sign gets filled up but i have yet to see that happen um you can schedule those messages to turn on and turn off at the interval of your choosing and you can um, send them all to the sign disconnect the computer and the sign takes over the sign has its own uh, internal clock so sign takes over and runs the schedule. All the messages are already in the memory. So we choose monthly. We go from 6 a.m. And then you can choose a specific day of the month. Like if you only want it to run on the 20th of every month, just choose the 20th. And that's pretty much scheduling. When you're done, you hit send schedule. All of the messages go out to the site. 